Greg here again with another video trying to cut through the crap on the internet. This one's going to be about, mostly about nuclear energy and how I believe it needs to have a second look. Because there's been a, a concerted effort in the press, the media, TV, movies, for the last four decades or more of a severe anti-nuke slant. And the anti-nuke people have been very busy at what they do. And the pro-nuke people just sort of been sitting around doing nothing. So I wanted to give a little insight about this and the lies on the internet. What do they say? What's the saying? Go um, tell a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. Well, um, that is generally credited to be from uh, uh, Joseph Goebbels, but it also has been credited to be from uh, Vladimir Lenin. Uh, but no, it actually goes back before that from Elsa Blagden. And here's the quote. If a lie is only printed often enough, it becomes quasi-truth. And if such a truth is repeated often enough, it becomes an article of belief a dogma, and men will die for it. And look in the, the word belief here. There's a lie right in the middle of that word belief. In order to cut through a lot of the crap here, I want to bring forth to you some of the points about nuclear energy. First of all, nuclear energy as we know it today was never intended to be the final form of nuclear energy. It was only the stepping stone uh, of, of fission. Decades ago, other technologies have been developed. Uh, now, in the days that we have a need for clean energy, green energy, uh, low carbon emission, low emissions, um, less environmental damage, safer, all those good things we want from getting our electricity from, nuclear can fit the bill, but does it really? Let's show you a graph here. The carbon intensity of electricity generation. Look where nuclear is. So nuclear is actually a pretty green source of energy, wouldn't you say? Uh, all of these have pluses and minuses, every single one of them. But most of our power right now comes from these three here. And as you can see, it's not a very green way to produce energy. About 11% of the world's power comes from nuclear energy presently. Uh, are you willing to totally cut back 11%? Some of you say, oh, of course I would. Okay, well then do it. Uh, but it's still not going to eliminate nuclear power just by doing that alone. If nuclear is going to die a death, let it die a death due to truth and facts, not lies, beliefs, fears, and outright scams like people on YouTube do to try to get money off of your fear of the word radiation. Anytime the word radiation is introduced, oh, people just become nuts. They don't understand it. Uh, let me look. At, let me tell you something about uh, thorium plants. Thorium reactors is something that you may not have heard about, and you really need to do some looking at this because it's really uh, that was the next generation of nuclear power plants that ne you never heard of and never got developed. Well, they did get developed. They just really haven't built any. On the screen and, and linked below, I'm going to show you 16 big thorium reactors, pros and cons. Let's give you an idea of what you need to look into a little bit here. I'm going to go over these very quickly. Number one, the first, first of all, I'll tell you the, off the, right off the bat that of these 16, 10 are pros and 6 are cons. Let's take a look at this. Number one, it eliminates, eliminates the threat of nuclear weapons. Number two, it comes from a plentiful supply. Number three, it is a technology that can be mass produced. Number four, it eliminates the threat of nuclear waste. Yeah, that's right. Your present nuclear waste can be utilized to make more energy in these plants. Number five, it produces high levels of energy. Number six, eliminates the safety concerns of traditional nuclear power. It's actually quite safe compared to our present technology, which can go wrong and does go wrong on occasion. Number seven, it offers the potential to reduce uh, war and eliminate poverty. Storage costs for spent fuel would be uh, reduced. It is a highly efficient technology compared to fossil fuel power generation. And thorium is safer to mine. Those are the advantages. Let's take a look at the disadvantages. Number one, there is no current infrastructure to support thorium use. Number two, the startup process could be lengthy and costly. Number three, not every thorium design is self-sustaining. Number four, the visible materials created by a thorium reactor provide different dangers. Number five, it costs more. And number six, research into thorium energy is politically restricted. 
So I would suggest you look into this a little bit. This was the next phase of, of nuclear energy, the next generation, which was supposed to be done many decades ago. But because of the anti-nuke fear porn artists out there, trying to scare you with that word radiation without any knowledge of what they're talking about, they've got you to believe that most nuclear power needs to go away completely. Okay, do you want green energy and how are you going to get that? There are other ways, but nuclear places right up there with ways that very well could be helping to save the environment. What about uh, safety? Because we've already addressed the nuclear waste part of it, because that's certainly a disadvantage with current nuclear power. What about safety? Uh, because that's one thing a lot of people, the, there's been nobody that's died from Fukushima, for instance. There have been some that died from Chernobyl, and many more that died from a lot of other accidents you've never even heard of. Uh, so yes, nuclear power can be very dangerous. But how dangerous is it really? Also linked below, we're going to have this list of nuclear and radiation accidents by death toll. These are the number of people that have died from radiation accidents. Okay? And as you can see, there's some that are disputed. And this would be the most, the most disputed right here. Uh, eight, up to 8,000, between 50 and 8,000 or possibly more than 8,000. So a lot of people died there. This was, this was in uh, the old Soviet Union. Uh, this is also disputed, but this is generally considered to be less than 100. Uh, the government figures are, are 33 people for this one. All right. But all the rest are shown here, and you won't find Fukushima anywhere on here. And there's a lot of them you probably never heard of. And you can see the numbers. If you add all these up, it comes to just under 200. If, if you use that, uh, the wind scale accident, wind scale in, in, in England, if you use that, that would be actually 33 here. All of those, besides this top one, all of those would equal about 200 deaths. 200 deaths, all the way down here at the bottom. 200 deaths, that's it. 200 deaths plus an unknown, possibly thousands. Okay, let's say it's 10,000 10, people. Uh, what does that look like? Well, let's show you something else here. Uh, what does that look like in a graph? And all the fear porn... People are going to love this. This is the big takeaway. For those of you who want to scream, they were all going to die from Fukushima, and radiation is an evil thing we need to get rid of, maybe I'll look at this little graph here. Death rate from nuclear power versus coal. Now, this is from 2011, but keep in mind, there has been no nuclear accidents since March of 2011. Fukushima was in March. This was after that date, and nobody has died in Fukushima. So this graph is actually going to be skewed in favor of coal and oil because look at this death rate per watts produced this is representative of what how many people have died of coal oil and what do we have here nuclear 